In my last video when I was talking about some of the specific issues that Tesla was encountering with their 4680 manufacturing, I left off by talking about a 3-in-1 machine that Tesla was currently developing that should make their manufacturing processes a bit more efficient. Now in this video, I wanna talk about some of the details of this three-in-one machine that Tesla is reportedly developing that were shared with me by a source that will remain nameless. And also I wanna dive into some details that were shared with me about how Tesla is currently developing a generation two 4680 battery cell. And um, I have some interesting details about that as well. So without further ado, let's dive in. I'm John and welcome to Cleaner Watt. Before I jump into all these exciting details, I wanna say a special thank you to all the members of the Cleaner Watt Patreon community, um, whose monthly financial support is a big part of what makes videos like this one possible. If you'd like to find out more about the Cleaner Watt Patreon community and how you can also support my work, I'll put a link in the video description. Okay, now let's move over to this three-in-one machine that Tesla is reportedly developing. According to one of my sources, when it comes to transforming the separate electrode rolls, anode, cathode, and separator layers into jelly rolls that make up the interior of the 4680 battery cell, the first generation process requires three separate machines to accomplish this task. I was also told that somewhere around 95% of the 4680 battery cells that are being produced right now at Tesla's Roadrunner facility in Fremont, California, are the generation one design 4680 battery cells. In addition, these first generation 4680 battery cells still use this three machine method to transform the electrode materials into their tightly wound jelly roll state. Here's a quick description of the three machines that are required for this step of the manufacturing process as it was described to me. First of all, machine one is a notching machine. This machine laser cuts a series of what is referred to as flags into the exposed metal edge, the edge that does not have the active cathode or anode material adhered to it, of the electrode rolls. And this same machinery uses controlled and directed puffs of air to fold over these flags in the proper direction. Machine number two is a winding machine. This machine takes the freshly notched rolls of electrode material and combines them with the separator material as it winds them into tight jelly rolls. The third machine is a welding machine and the function of this machine is to weld the current collector plates to each terminal end of the jelly roll. Now these three machines definitely get the job done and probably quite efficiently, but Tesla has never been okay with just getting the job done. If you've been following Tesla for any period of time, you know that they're constantly looking for new ways to simplify and optimize their manufacturing processes. And this includes even something like this jelly roll assembly. It was told to me that Tesla is currently working to combine the notching, the winding, and also the welding machine into a single multi-function machine that can perform all three of these processes. If Tesla is indeed able to successfully combine these three machines into one, this should reduce the production time of battery cells because cells won't have to be transferred from one machine to another, and it should also further decrease the amount of floor space needed for battery manufacturing. And do remember that improvements like this will be on top of an already efficient manufacturing process. It was also mentioned to me that Tesla has a team of around 20 engineers that are dedicated to developing this three-in-one machine, which really leads me to believe that this machine is a big deal. Now, when it comes to the misaligned flags and the telescoping jelly roll issues that I mentioned in the past video, this new machine could very well be a big part of Tesla's efforts to uh, further eliminate some of these issues from popping up during the manufacturing processes. And it seems obvious to me that Tesla's talented engineers will take what they've learned so far um, from their current processes and design this new multi-function machine with fixing those issues and maybe any other issues in mind. If you've not yet watched that past video where I described these issues, I definitely recommend that you check that video out and I'll put a link to it in the video description. As you would expect, my source also relayed to me that Tesla hopes to use this new three-in-one machine um, for their 4680 battery production at Gigafactory Texas and also very possibly at Gigafactory Berlin as well. 
Okay, now moving over to the 4680 battery cells themselves. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it was told to me that Tesla is currently developing their second generation 4680 battery cells um, at this uh, Roadrunner facility in Fremont. In addition, as I mentioned earlier, around 95% of the 4680 battery cells that are currently being manufactured at this Fremont, California Roadrunner production facility are the first generation 4680 battery cells. It was also told to me that the other 5% of 4680 battery cells that are being produced at this Fremont, California facility are various iterations of a new second generation 4680 battery cell that Tesla is currently working to develop. Tesla is reportedly manufacturing the second generation 4680 battery cells in a separate, smaller, low volume portion of the factory that they have codenamed Swift, named after a type of bird that is known for being extremely fast in flight. I was told that the second generation 4680 battery cells are mainly being used for testing and experiments as they develop out this next generation of 4680 batteries. Now from what I have gathered from this information, this new second generation 4680 battery cell seems to still be in its prototype stage. Uh, but there is at least one physical visible difference that you can see on these new battery cells and that comes down to the bottom of the cell design. On the bottom of these new second generation battery cells is a new spiral indentation pattern with a divot in the center, which you can see in this screenshot from a recent 4680 battery manufacturing video that Tesla released. The first generation 4680 battery cells do not have this same design at the bottom of the battery can. When it comes to the purpose of this new design, I recently spoke to a separate source who indicated that the generation one 4680 battery cell cap design shown on the left is installed via a mechanical process and sits on top of a separate current collector plate that looks similar to the image that I've illustrated here that connects to the folded over electrode flags on the jelly roll. I was told that with this new second generation cell design, the separate interior current collector plate is no longer necessary and that this new tri-spoke designed plate connects directly to the internal jelly roll flags. In addition, this new plate is connected via a laser welding process, and it was conjectured that most likely this depressed portion in the tri-spoke design is what makes the electrical connection, and that the three thin lines that you see are very possibly marks left by the welding process. This welding process appears to be what Tesla is demonstrating in this video. It was also suggested that the removal of this additional current collector plate should make room for a slightly taller electro jelly roll, which could improve the energy density of the second generation 4680 battery cells. I'm assuming that this new design change could also be related to Tesla's three-in-one machine that they're developing, as this kind of manufacturing simplification would make such a combination machine more feasible. In addition, from what I was told, the center divot in each battery cell is where electrolyte is added before the cell is completely sealed. And also, the original source mentioned that the center divot also includes an advanced pressure release technology designed to help mitigate potential cell and battery pack damage should a thermal runaway event occur. I did want to mention one other thing about this second generation 4680 battery cell that Tesla is reportedly developing because according to this same source, at least in the past, Tesla was experimenting with varying electrode thicknesses in these new 4680 battery iterations. This of course could have a big impact on the amount of energy that is stored in each one of these 4680 battery cells and could greatly affect and improve the energy density for instance. This seems to go very nicely with what Inside EVs reported in this July 17th article about the estimated 4680 battery cell energy density. Using data provided from at Troy Testlike on Twitter, who shared the rumored energy density goals for Tesla's generation 1, 2, and 3 4680 battery cells, Inside EVs estimated that the energy density of the first generation 4680 battery cells is likely around 276 watt hours per kilogram. Their second generation battery cells could be somewhere around 305 watt hours per kilogram, and their third generation battery cells could improve further to 333 watt watt hours per kilogram. Obviously a cell level energy density above 300 watt hours per kilogram would be a big deal and could increase the range of Tesla's future electric vehicles. 
Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And also, if you currently work in the battery industry and you'd be willing to share any insights or clarifications with me, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt. Com. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I would like to once again thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up, I'll put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.